Hi, everybody. It's Man Day Monday. So I like to talk about men. <laughs> I like to share what I know about men. <laughs> and I like to hear what's going on with you. Because at the end of the day, it's like I've done, you know, um, well, I've talked to hundreds of women. Um, I've done, you know, interviews of a bunch of women because I love interviewing people. And whenever it comes down to like, what do you really want? It's like to find the right man, you know, to find the right man, to find the right partner, to find the right person to be with. So that's why I wrote my book, Girl's Guide to the Unavailable Man, my quick little ebook. And that's why we're talking about it today. So welcome back, everybody. Um, let me just make sure that I'm running here. Okay, here I am. I see uh, that Melissa's here. Hi, Melissa. Let's see, two comments. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it looks like all's going well and you can hear me and I'm broadcasting, so that's all good. So I wanna do a quick recap on the contest and how it's going and what's going on. Hi, Marie. Um, and actually, now that I see Marie and she says, hello, hi, Veronica, hi, Patricia, um, I want to give an update. So there have been so far four days of the challenge, right? Um, and day one, day two, day three, day four. So, so far, there have been two people who have posted every day who have done the challenge every day and posted. And those people are Marie Wallace and Pam Sherwood. So woohoo, yay you guys. And Marie actually got a bonus point because she, for the true love story, because she went out of her comfort zone, went up to her neighbors and, um, ask them how they met because she had been seeing them together and thought they were really cute. So she has a really cute story there. So check it out in the comments. Um, and um, see what she wrote because it's very cute. And so knock yourself out, Marie, for going up to people and asking them their true love story. Nice. <clears throat> um, and I also wanted to do like a little bit of real life coaching about the whole create your reality thing, because there was a lot of people that commented um, yesterday about smiling and saying hi, and making eye contact. Lisa Goodman, Pam Sherwood, Denise Hassler Gray, Tanya Roeder, Marie, uh, Patricia Nelson. Right. So good job, you guys. Good job. And I want to pop up my slide again about um, creating your reality. <clears throat> Please tell me I didn't close it. No, I didn't. Okay, great. <clears throat> dun, dun, dun. Find myself. Here we go. Share screen, share, create your reality. Okay. Oops, nope, that's Monday Monday. That's coming up though. <laughs> okay, create your reality. View, slideshow. Okay, so let's take some stories from smiling and saying hi, hi and making eye contact. So Pam wrote that she did it three times and the people were really warm and welcoming to her. She said it was a very... It was a freeing and pause. I don't know what I see. Here's my problem is my handwriting. A responsive and freeing exchange of energy. And then she wrote, there are some really nice people out there. Okay, so event. She smiled and said hi to people she didn't know, right? Emotional reaction. She felt a pleasing exchange of energy, right? So the the core belief, the thought that she had was, oh my gosh, there's nice people out there, right? There's nice people out there. There's a lot of good people in this world. So what's her action? Her action is that, what? That she feels really good about doing this challenge, that she'll probably do more, um, that, you know, she'll say hi and 
um, make eye contact with more people, right? So she created her reality. So let's take a situation that maybe didn't feel so great. So I talked to Lisa today and she told me that she was at this um, charity event and she smiled and said, I can't smiled and said hi to this woman. And she said she was like almost in tears and that she just was she would barely even talk to her or barely even look at her. So what did what was Lisa's thought? What was her reaction was like, oh, my gosh, that poor girl. Right. Oh, my gosh, that poor girl. And then. She turned and then this other woman walked up and she introduced them and this woman just turned around and like walked off and her thought about that was like next. Oh, well, you know, next, because she's really resilient. So if and then um, I know there was another post too where she said that she did that in the grocery store and um, the man or the wife gave her a dirty look and she thought, oh, stay away from my man, right? So that triggered a belief that this woman didn't want her talking to the husband. Well, that may be true, but that's, so it's, that's that lady's problem, right? That's that woman's problem. So how somebody else responds to you how somebody else acts to you is their problem but what you think about it how much you let it affect you what belief that you believe like oh you know I, and i'm making this up because i have no idea but you know the belief could be like oh you know all women are jealous which i don't believe that's a belief i'm making this up um in lisa's case the belief could be um you know, oh, this is a terrible area, and oh, this is a very unfriendly people are at this charity event. That could be her belief, right? So it really is up to you to decide what you're going to believe about an event that happens, and that's how you create your reality. So I just wanted to point that out really quickly. Um, and then I also wanted to share a win. So during the whole smiling and saying, smiling saying hi and making eye contact lisa actually met a guy and he just went up to her and gave her his phone number so woohoo, that's very exciting everybody um i you know i love to see the action and the energy starts to move and when you're taking action and the energy starts to move then stuff starts to happen right then you start to attract into your life so that's really really Super cool. I love hearing stuff like that. And any wins that you have, you know, please feel free to share. I definitely want to hear about it um, and hear how things are going. So let me check in with the group again before I jump into Man Day Monday. Jean says hi. Let's see. 14 comments. Let's see. <clears throat> hmm, I'm not seeing all the comments. That's very strange. So interesting. I only see like a few comments. Well, anyway. Oh, Jean wrote, hi, looking forward to today's webinar tonight. Yay, Jean. Glad you're here. I see. It says that you can't find it in this post where I'm talking. So, um, it looks like Jean, you're commenting on this this very post right now. So you might want to refresh your um, you might want to refresh your browser, and then the video should pop up. Okay. So does anybody have any questions in the comments um, before I dive into the content of Monday Monday? All right. Great. So, sorry, I know there's all these delays, but. Okay, so we did that one, escape. Let's pull up this one. All right. So, um, I know a lot of you have read my book, but I wanna just do a little refresher on Unavailable Men. 
right? Because the reason that I even wrote my ebook about unavailable men, the reason I do tons of interviews about unavailable men is that I just hear this over and over again, you know, like I just keep attracting unavailable men. I just keep attracting men that ghost me or men that won't commit, right? So my definition is anytime a man is unable or unwilling to give you the commitment that you want, he becomes unavailable. And it could be as simple as taking out the trash, right? If you can be married, ladies, you can be married to an unavailable man. I'm sure many, many, many of you have been married to or in a relationship with an unavailable man, right? So just because he commits doesn't mean he's necessarily emotionally available or contributing fully into the relationship. Okay. So there's three levels for the sake of, you know, prior to marriage. There's the terminally unavailable man, and he is unable, like he is completely unable, cannot, will not, no matter what you do, ever, ever, ever give you the commitment that you want. Some examples of these are the addicted unavailable man, you know, substance abuse, workaholism, porn addiction, right? Narcissist, I mean, I, most women at some point, especially, you know, you've done enough dating, you're going to encounter a narcissist along the way. You know, it can be really easy to fall for a narcissist. It can be really easy to get sucked into a relationship with a narcissist longer than you want to. Um, a man who's married or in a relationship, a man going through a rebound or somebody going through a life crisis, because at that time, they are unavailable. And then there's the situationally unavailable man. And this is like 60%. And honestly, like the terminally unavailable is not that big of a percentage. And by the way, the percentages are pretty much the same for women as well as men. Um, a lot of men will say the same thing that they attract women who are unavailable. So, and I've had a lot of women who are in relationships now who are like, gosh, I didn't even realize it, but I was totally unavailable. Like I was not available for a relationship at all. And Rosie talked about how she wasn't available for a relationship, right? So the situationally unavailable man is unwilling to give you the relationship you want. So he's just unwilling. He is willing to commit, however, for the right, the right woman. And then there's the healed unavailable man who appears to be unavailable, like warning signs may be there, like he's never married. Like remember Rosie was talking about um, her, her partner and how he had never married. And that, you know, was what she had considered a red flag. Um, maybe he's a recovering alcoholic. I have one of my clients who got married. He was a recovering alcoholic. He didn't drink, but he had been sober for like, 20 plus years and it, you know, just, he could go out to restaurants, you know, he could do everything in life. He just didn't choose to drink. He was very healed, right? He just, drinking wasn't for him. Um, people who've been divorced multiple times, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, he's been divorced two or three times. Maybe, but maybe not. And so the way you can tell that he's a healed unavailable man is because he's worked on himself. Only the man can heal himself. So you can't heal him. You can't change him. You can't make him recover from any of these things. He has to do it himself. And you'll be able to tell that based on conversations. You know, he'll say things like, I've done a lot of work on myself. I've done a lot of growth. I've learned from my mistakes. He's not healed if he's like, it was her fault. She did it. She's a bitch. I just picked the wrong women. I just picked bitchy women, you know, and blaming and in the victim, in the victim spot, in the taking a victim stance, not healed, not available. Okay. So. We are going to talk about the situationally unavailable man. Now, in my ebook, um, I go into great detail about how to avoid the unavailable man, but I don't want to talk about that for this particular webinar because you can you can read about it. I want to talk about the like 
gray area. It's like the one that got away guy, you know, the situationally unavailable man, right? I'm gonna talk about that guy. So, whoops, where did that go? Yeah, this, okay. So why do men go away, right? Like he's, he's open to a commitment. You know, he, he doesn't have any of the terminal characteristics. You know, he seems like a, a great catch. So why, why does he go away? Why, and even if you're dating just a few times and it's, the date seemed like they were going great, why, why doesn't he call you? Or why doesn't he, you know, take it to the next level? Well, these are the ways that women act on a date that repel men, okay? So being a chameleon, right? Like trying, pretending like you share his, his hobbies and his interests and the things he likes. Um, trying to be the woman that he likes, right? So um, an example of this would be one of my clients was like, put that she likes hiking on her online profile. And she was like, yeah, well, men like hiking and, you know, like hiking's a good date. I'm like, well, do you like hiking? She's like, no, I hate hiking. I hate sweating. I hate being out of doors. I'm like, well, you can't put hiking on a profile just because you think that's what the guy will like. And even trying and another client like watered down her profile. So she didn't like show really anything about herself. And then whenever a man would contact her, she would try to read him and like see what it is that he wants in a woman and then try to be that. And it just leaves like a weird, like they don't know why, but they just don't, they're not interested. You're not interesting. They're not interested in getting to know you because it just something doesn't feel off. I mean, a lot of times when men just go away, like good men just go away, something feels off and they can't put their finger on it, but you know, on to the next, right? Um, and then another way that women repel men is just trying to be perfect, just trying to, just looking so perfect, trying to have everything together, you know, oh, I'm, you know, I'm my career, talking about your career a lot, you know, like, oh, and I'm so important at work and I have this great career and, you know, it just, it's, and it's just off-putting. It's like, who are you? Who are you? You know, when um, when your true love falls in love with you, he falls in love with you, all of you, the quirky things about you, especially like the weird, like little things that maybe you would find so embarrassing. That is what they're going to love. And then being the cool girl, right? Like, yeah, let's go to the strip club. Oh, let's drink, you know, let's go out and get hammered. Oh, I'll match you drink for drink. Like, you know, not, I'm not putting any demands on him, right? Oh, and the other thing about being Miss Perfect too, and this is what I used to do all the time in the past, is like, I would pretend like, oh, you know, all these men want me and like, I'm so popular. I remember I had this guy that I dated and um, I'd be like, oh, I'll just meet you there. You have a driver. We go to Vegas all the time. We have this Las Vegas relationship. And I was like, oh yeah, I can get into the V. I'll just meet you in the VIP room. Oh yeah, I can get in. Oh yeah, my driver will take me. I'll just go with my driver and I'll like meet you there. And I was always trying to show him how amazing and perfect and beautiful and how awesome I was. And it was just, it was alienating. It felt really empty. And I was like running around, spending all this energy trying to be perfect. And it killed the relationship. And I felt with him, like he was like, he was actually had relationship potential. So I was like trying to be this thing to prove to him how great I was. And really Earlier in our relationship, when I was just me, is when he really fell in love with me right away, right? And the same thing with being the cool girl, like being so understanding if he comes home late, like it, that you're, there's going to be some feeling that he has of like, you know, like it's not going to, it's not going to incite the feelings in him that he's going to want to feel towards his girlfriend, you know, like protective feelings, like, you know, caretaking you feelings. It, you're going to put yourself in the buddy position and the friends with benefits kind of position 
And if he's looking for a relationship, which a lot of men are looking for, a, they, they want a relationship. And if you're doing this, they're, they're going to like pass you by because they're not going to think of you as a relationship material. Um, and then being too goal oriented. So, you know, making the date an interview, just because you met online and you both say you want a relationship doesn't mean you just dive into relationship talk. Like you have to still get to know each other. You have to have small talk. You have to have fun. That's how you create romance. And if you're being like goal oriented and like looking at, you know, getting into a relationship and talking about the relationship and talking about what you guys both want, you're going to take all the fun out of it. And you're not going to create the bonding and the chemistry that you create by having shared experiences. And you need to be able to have fun together to have the relationship last and that, and you need to start with that, not start with the end game in mind. Um, and then there's just simply like he's unavailable and needs to go away. So if your relationship, you know, if you're like knowing who you are and you're relationship oriented and you're willing to take your time and get to know somebody before jumping into a relationship, before jumping into commitment, an unavailable man who only wants to get you in bed or who only wants to have sex, who does that whole thing of like coming on really strong at the beginning to, and building up all of this pressure to win you over. And then the second you like sleep with him and it's not even about sex, but it's just that for most women, when they have sex, the like commitment light goes on and you just sort of like want to relax into the commitment. And then the pressure, all that pressure that he's been building, pursuing you is like gone. And he's like, oh, the pressure's gone. I can relax. Whereas you want to push forward, now he just relaxes. So if you make a man wait, and if you develop this bond, and if you let him see who you are, and if you get to know him for who he is, and you show your real self, and you don't try to impress him or be all these other things than who you are, and you keep, he's going to go away because he's not going to want to have a, a real relationship. But in that case, you can say, I was true to myself. I, it's important to me to take my time getting to know somebody. It's important for me to honor myself in the process. It's important to me to feel comfortable before I have intimacy. Intimacy is a big deal for me. I like to wait. If he doesn't respect that, then you can know, okay, he's unavailable and that's why he went away. Okay. So if you repel a terminally unavailable man, then this goes back to creating your reality, which is, oh my God, there's something wrong with me. That's why he went away, right? The, inter the interpretation you give the event of him going away. So if a man goes away and you look at these four things and you say, you know what? I was kind of trying to be really perfect. I think I can see that that might be why he went away. So instead of being like, oh my God, I'm awful, I'm terrible, you could say, hmm, now I can learn from this. And next time I meet somebody I really like, I'm going to try to show more of who I am and I'm going to try to be myself more. So, okay, so let me see. <clears throat> the next thing why men won't commit. So this is about the way you kind of turn a man off sort of at the beginning, right? First few dates, you know, maybe the first few weeks. But now this is like, you know, you've had a bunch of dates, you've spent some time together, you know, and it's just not, he's just not taking the relationship to the next level. He's just, it's, it, he never calls you girlfriend. You can't take advanced plans for granted. You don't feel like you're a primary part of his life, right? So why, why won't he commit? Why isn't he letting you all the way into his life and like embracing you as his significant other or his partner? 
Well, often it's because you're doing too much for him. So if you're like always making him dinner and helping him with stuff and driving to him, and if you're the one that calls him and follows up with him on plans, then you're, you're doing too much. And he's never going to have the space to come forward for you. So it's all about energy and relationship. And when you're putting too much energy, when you're the one putting the most energy into that relationship, then he is going to be backing off on his energy and you're way ahead of him. I mean, I, when I have clients that I have a, my Dating for True Love committed program, which is for people in this situation, specifically like, can, let's, let's figure this out once and for all. Can this relationship be salvaged? Can we take this to the next level? Can you have the commitment you want? Or can you know that you tried everything and walk away feeling really good, like I'm really done and I have no regrets. So the first thing I do is like, back off, back off, back off your energy. And it's interesting too, because even during the dating stage, if you're thinking about him a lot, like if you're, or something happens, and even if he's really into you and you're like thinking about him so much and worried, like one of my clients, um, is just seeing this guy and it's new and he um was gone for a few weeks and it's always hard when they leave for a few weeks you know because it's like oh my god is, uh, am i never gonna see him again is he gonna call me well something happened they had a miscommunication whatever and she was like and then she didn't hear from him so she started worrying oh my god did i blow it you know could i've done something different now i haven't heard from him he's been calling today with just that worrying just that energy will make him call less and the second you just go you know what it's fine it's okay i'm going to focus on myself i'm going to have fun and pull your energy way back in and i teach exercises for how to do that all of a sudden boom you'll hear from him and he'll be like happy and in a great mood because people sense the energy in a relationship that's why when you're in a relationship with like an unavailable man or a narcissist. And when you finally decide it's time to move on and you really are like, I'm done, I'm letting go, they come back full so hard again, right? And that's why at the beginning of the relationship, when you're holding back and you're not sure and they're coming on strong and coming on strong because you're the one holding back and they're coming forward. So it's not about playing games. It's just about, getting ahead of yourself and if he's not putting as much energy into the relationship as you are you are just ahead of yourself you're just ahead of yourself um the other reason that men won't commit is because women don't ask for what they need and so and most of the time it's like you're afraid you'll scare him off but if you don't ask for what you need it actually just creates a dynamic where he doesn't feel like he appreciates you or doesn't feel appreciated by you. And it doesn't create like the intimacy that you need, you know, asking for what you need. And he'll be like very eager to give that to you if he's a good guy and if it's, you know, possible. And if you just never have any needs, it's just actually weirdly sort of boring for him. Right. So again, there's nothing to inspire him to want to make you happy or to want to do things for you. You're not inspiring him. I'm um, having sex too early. Definitely not good just because, you know, there's this certain buildup that happens at the beginning of the relationship when they're pursuing you. And when you have sex, there's like that letdown that I talked about earlier. And it's like a real thing. And then you want to pull forward, but when they have that letdown, then they sort of pull back like, oh, okay, I've got that nailed down. Okay, phew, you know, now I can relax. But you don't want that to happen. You want to keep that, that tension and that anticipation going for some time so that you can build the bond and so that you can kind of become like a habit with each other. And then when you do have sex, it'll be so much better. And there won't be this let down and pull back because he'll just be used to contacting you all the time. Um, and then revolving your life around him, you know, it's just, so here's an example, like, okay, I'll call you Thursday for the weekend. 
So all day Thursday, you're just on pins and needles waiting for him to call. And you don't hear from him and you don't hear from him and you don't hear from him. And here you don't know, well, what am I doing something with him Friday night? Am I doing something with him Saturday night? I mean, I need to plan my weekend. Well, so then finally you don't hear from him and then you text him Friday morning. Well, are we still doing something this weekend? And he's like, oh yeah, sorry. Well, I need to know when I need to plan my weekend. Okay, plan your freaking weekend. And by the way, don't be available. If he said he was gonna call you Thursday to make plans for the weekend, then make other plans. Cause it's just, it's, it's like, lazy it's letting him be lazy in the relationship and then he will not appreciate you and this really can even be the same way with friends I mean it can be the same way with any dynamic it's just you tend to put up with more from a man right from somebody who has relationship potential um and the even better thing to do is if he says I'll call you Thursday to make plans for the weekend you can say you know something like oh, you know, it, it's easier for, I'd actually, you know, I kind of, I'm somebody that likes advanced plans. Is there a reason that we can't just plan something now? You know, just, is there a reason not like plan something now, but like, is there a reason? And then he may say, oh, well, it's because I'm waiting to hear from, you know, my wife about when I'm going to have my son or something like that. But again, like waiting around for somebody and then trying to read their mind is the is just it's a, the energetically it's a bad thing to do. And then choosing men based on their potential. So many women think, you know, well, he's not being very considerate now. He's not, you know, being considerate of my feelings. He's not making advanced plans with me. It's not, you know, calling me when he says he, he will. But if he would just commit, then these problems would go away. And the truth is that no, he will be selfish before the relationship and he will be selfish during the relationship because you did not inspire him to step up and be considerate of you. You let him get away with all this stuff. So why just because you're living together or married, is it gonna change? 75% of relationship of divorces are filed by the woman. 75% of divorces are filed by the woman, why? Because they didn't set the boundaries up. They didn't set the relationship up for success when they're dating. And then they thought, oh, when I get married, it'll all be better. But it's not. It's exactly the same, except for now you're kind of like trapped and unsatisfied in your relationship. So that's just a quick overview on what when you run into these unavailable man issues. So now I want to talk to you about the ways that you overlook the right man. So having the list, both Tamina and Rosie talked about the list. And these lists is usually like superficial qualities. You know, it's like external qualities. Like he has to have children. He has to have, these are was Rosie's stuff. He has to have children. You know, he has to have been, you know, been married and divorced. You know, he has to work in a particular field. Um, I've heard like, I, you know, he has to work in finance. One of my clients, you know, like that. Th those qualities are not going to make you happy and you're going to overlook good men by looking for this list. And nobody wants to feel like somebody's picking them just based on their physical appearance. Yes, chemistry. We, you know, I did those videos about chemistry. We could have a whole talk about chemistry, but like mutual attraction is important. But looking for superficial qualities is an icky way to date because you don't make that genuine connection, which is what a true love relationship is right? You don't, you don't really see the other person and you don't love the other person for who they are when you're just going, oh, he's a good catch. Oh, he has all of these things that make him a good catch. And it almost is like a gold digger kind of mentality. You know, it's like the trophy husband, the trophy wife. It's not something that's a genuine, loving, caring relationship. So it's really important to know what your core values are and what it is that you need to attract in another person. Like for Rosie, it was um, somebody who was kind and that was his. And they 
magnetize each other, right? They were focusing on someone who was kind and that is what they attracted, law of attraction. You know, making snap judgments and rejecting someone early. One of my clients um, met this guy and he said something in their conversation and it just like incited her that he was just feeling sorry for her or something and she immediately shut down and wanted nothing to do with him. So when I urged her to call him back, it turns out they got married. And then sometimes you self-sabotage because you're scared. And if you're scared, you do things like, you know, talk about yourself too much or you over-disclose or you start, you know, interviewing them or you start kind of playing weird games, you know, and, and whereas you were like relaxed and fun before you start acting kind of not crazy, but just you might resort, like you might be really cool and relaxed and fun. And then you might start trying to be the perfect girl, or you might start to try to be the chameleon, or you might start trying to act a certain way. So if you're feeling scared, the best thing to do is just to acknowledge that. And I say, get help because when you're dating somebody, when you're, you know, dating, there's all these little um, nuances and little choices that you make along the way. And there's a time where the relationship reaches what I call like critical mass, where it's growing, it's going to move forward or it's going to end and how you do it at those moments and, and the self-awareness and understanding is what takes the relationship to the next level. Because the fact is everybody has a past and everybody has a history and everybody has baggage and everybody is afraid of getting hurt to some degree. So men have feelings too. And if you're suddenly acting strange when you are acting one way and you start to self-protect or they're going to interpret it, they're going to create their reality and they're going to make their own interpretation based on their past. So... Anyway, let me jump back to the Facebook group really quick and see how everybody's doing. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm so weird that I'm not seeing all these comments. Tara, Tara says, can you tell how many men have called me the cool chick? <laughs> I totally get it. Somebody said they got used to get over a breakup. Um, so I will just say that, um, you know, you, it's it, it, like feeling like you were used by somebody. What kind of interpretation is that, right? What, what, so something happened because he didn't, the using you wasn't what happened, but an event happened and then you, created an interpretation around that which is that he used you but what does and then what does that say about you so what is the decision that you've now made about yourself right what are the things you're telling yourself about yourself because of this circumstance so i would just say that every relationship happens for a reason and it's a good to get curious you know what can i do differently you know what what did i learn from this instead of making an interpretation of, you know, I'm not lovable or, you know, I'm a sucker for men or I make, you know, I, I can't, I don't pick good men. None of those things are good, are good beliefs to adopt, you know, based on our past experiences, right? And I really do believe that you make all your mistakes with the wrong guy so that when the right guy comes up, you're ready. Okay, so that looks like the comments there. Let's jump back here and I wanna share something else with you before we jump off for the night. Okay, so I'm giving you guys a opportunity to earn some bonus points and I, I am asking you for what I need. So I have had like, Thousands of women read this ebook, and yet I have no reviews. And I've had tons of clients that I've gotten from this ebook, and yet I have no reviews. And you know why? Because I did not ask for any. So here's what I would love. 
if you've read my ebook and you write me a review, you will get a bonus point. Um, and if you allow me to use your name and the city and state next to your review, you will get, oh, that was supposed to just be one bonus point, but it's two. Awesome. So then you will get three bonus points. Okay. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to put the link directly to the ebook above, um, in, above this video, like how I did with Roni, Rosie's bonus gift. And so if you haven't read it yet, first of all, I really think you should read it because it's a great it's a great ebook. Like it just gives you a lot of information. We go, you know, in deeper into some of these topics, especially about recognizing and avoiding um, terminally unavailable men. So it can save you a lot of heartbreak. And so if you're, you know, a little bit behind on the challenges or whatever, and you want to get some extra bonus points, this is a great way to do it. Um, even if you're like doing great in the challenge and, you know, you're, all on top of it and you liked the book, you got value out of the book, we would really, really appreciate a review. So I will have that for you um, when we're done here. And you can email it to me at Pamela at datingfortruelove.com. You can message it to me. Um, you could even post the review in the comments if you want to, and I can just copy it and use it. So whatever's easiest for you. Um, but I would love that. Um, so, so there we have it. I'll pop back into the Facebook group really quick one more time and see if there's any questions. Any more comments? Let me refresh. <clears throat> Okay, it doesn't look like it. Okay, awesome. All right, ladies, so keep up the great work. I'm really, really excited with everything you've been doing. Um, and thank you so much. We will talk again tomorrow. Bye.